Hello, everybody. Valentin Todoro from Elder here. Today, we're going to start a new series where we're going to look at the Visual Builder Redwood architecture. We're going to do a quick overview on this meeting, and in the preceding videos, we'll do everything from editing pages in express mode, in advanced mode, building our own bespoke apps, um, pushing those through pipelines, and everything that has to do with Visual Builder. So today, we're going to do a quick overview of just Visual Builder Studio itself. The best way to get to a Visual Builder Studio is to go through your uh, application. Uh, you can open up your uh, hamburger at the top left and then go down to configuration. And here you'll see Visual Builder. OK, when we get to a page, when we go and edit one, there's also a method to do it from your icon at the top right to go and edit a Redwood page when we are within a Redwood page. But for now, we're going to actually open a Visual Builder uh, from the menu itself, from configuration. You can go through the tiles, of course, but the best way is uh, from the hamburger at the top left. Okay, you open it, and now you're within the organizational piece of the Visual Builder Studio. Okay, This is where all your projects are going to be housed. Uh, one important thing to note uh, is this is actually pushed out. You're actually outside of the Cloud Fusion applications. This is a separate instance um, that even though it is connected, um, it is actually a separate, completely separate instance that's running where you manage um, your Visual Builder Redwood pages and patterns and flows. Okay. I'm going to jump to this PowerPoint presentation to kind of clarify this a, a little more. So um, the VBS platform itself, again, is independent from the cloud applications development environments themselves. All right. And within these VBS um, environments and projects, and of course, projects being the overall container for everything you might do in HCM or in finance, and usually you want to have a project for a specific product line like HCM, and within that, all the extensions would be housed. But um, they are separate. It's very important to, to distinguish that the studio itself and the Visual Builder IDE platform are separate from the, from the fundamentally built uh, you know, HCM, finance, uh, CX sales um, applications. Okay? And what you do within each one of these projects is you build extensions. Okay? You'll build an extension to modify the specific page, to hide specific fields, to default values to those fields. Um, to invoke some kind of uh, notifications if you needed to, to kind of extend um, that's what it's already been built for those applications. And those get overlaid on top of your application, okay? They're not effectively changing um, the, the source code of those applications. You're overlaying those changes as part of an extension on top uh, when you do the build, okay? Uh, and another important thing to note that uh, everything is built, all of these applications are built on a unified app, okay? Um, so you, you'll notice that whenever you go to build a new extension within Visual Builder Studio, uh, that option of none, when you go to select what the base application is, none denotes the unified app itself, okay? You're building on top of the unified app. You could try to build a completely separate application using Visual Builder Studio, which is a framework, um, those options are not there because you're not building on top of the Fusion SaaS product you're building on your own. But with, with this, and since we're talking about um, uh, Fusion applications, they're all built on a unified app. The Oracle developer is actually built on top of that, their own uh, modules, be it uh, digital sales, a help desk, time entry, all of those uh, Redwood pages are built on top of the UI app. And then on top of those you, is what you apply your extensions be them uh, you know hiding fields showing fields defaulting messages you know you're, you're extensiating those themselves so that's an important point i wanted to make before we go uh further within um the demo here of visual builder studio and there's another very important thing to note is visual builder people kind of will mention visual builder which is the editing piece of it this is the studio which is a collection uh pretty much an idea of of everything you might do for a project, everything from administering team members that might have access to this, uh, your build pipelines, um, various workspaces, your Git repositories, Maven dependencies, um, managing your environments, all of those are managed within the studio um, 
onion of, of the puzzle itself, okay? And you know, might notice that everything here is grayed out at this time. It's because you have to select a project. It's, it's the first thing um, that you have to select. And it looks like there's a project here called application extensions. Obviously you wanna name it something a little better than application extension, but that's the one that kind of came out of the box with this demo environment. On top of this kind of high level, before we get into the project, another very important piece to note uh, is that you'll have build executors. So these are virtual machines that are sitting within your OCI that actually, when you push the, the, the pipeline, you know, you make a bunch of changes, it gets approved and you create a merge request, they have to be built somehow um, to the main branch. So you have to have a built executor. There's a template that kind of sets it up and this I'm using just kind of the default out of the box um, built, but this is kind of a virtual machine. You can see this is a Linux 8 virtual machine and it's got uh, various packages that are built in here. You have your Node.js, JUnit for testing, Java, um, uh, probably uh, IDE um, as well. So not IDE, JDE, uh, Rudy, um, and so forth, Ruby. And the build executor itself, you can see it here. And right now it's impending, but when you actually trigger a build pipeline, it'll get spun up. It's gonna build uh, and, and run through the, the packages and process the changes and create your extensions uh, and then it spins back down. So that's one important piece to the puzzle. Okay, so let's toggle back to projects. And again, we'll select a project here. We'll enter the project and now you'll see that everything here is now activated, okay? All of various workspaces. And right now we're kind of in the project home, which is kind of the landing page. You can see various tiles for all of your workspaces and environments you might have set up and you can have multiple environments, right? You might have a, a dev one, dev five, dev seven, and be pushing changes to various ones based on what kind of workspaces and changes you're making. Uh, you'll be pushing um, um, and building against various uh, environments, okay? You'll also have a, a team space, obviously. Right now I'm the project manager uh, and owner of this, but you could have various developers uh, and a full CI, CD uh, pipeline that can be all controlled right here through Visual Builder Studio, okay? The, the workspaces are, of course, a collection of, of branches and re repos. Um, this is the one that I just built a, a few minutes ago when I went to edit the page, and we'll do that in a preceding video. You have a Git repo. Uh, you have your merge uh, requests, where I don't have any merge requests. And when you go and edit a page through kind of the simplified um, express mode, uh, the and you go to publish, requests get built automatically, but you got to actually create merge requests directly right from Visual Builder Studio. Um, various uh, pieces here for Maven repos, Docker containers. Build is a very important one as well. This is where your package gets uh, packaged up. So any kind of changes you do to any of the Redwood pages will get packaged up and then deployed to your target environment. Okay, so whatever you've set up as the environment, that's what gets built from your um, as you go through the commit process to your local repo, to your remote repo, and then uh, right to the main branch as well, okay? Uh, environments, again, another very important one. This is where you'll set up your instances. Um, uh, and of course, out of the box, this one got immediately built when I went to edit a page, okay? So it's already here. We'll see that it's available. It's uh, IDCS um, security authentication. Uh, another piece to Visual Builder Studio is it's got its own issue tracking. Again, everything housed in one single location. So you can track you issues, you can assign developers. Um, once something is resolved, you can you know, push those and go through a merge request and evaluation process, making sure that everything gets approved as you've made changes to your pages. Um, you can have boards and kind of assign tasks through an agile process and wikis where you can house um, just knowledge base for all of your um, how we configured this, some design documents, whatever it may be, you can house that all within Studio itself, okay? And the last piece within um, Visual Builder Studio is the administrator where you can actually configure all of these things, set up how your Visual Builder is um, set up itself, okay? So an administrator, and you have to have, of course, security and be an admin uh, to see this project administrator um, piece to the puzzle, but um, everything kind of flows from that project down, but it's most critical to remember kind of the overall structure, um, kind of on the slide two here, that the VBS platform itself is separate. It's what manages your entire project lifecycle from 
uh, your team members through what they're actually uh, extending as part of the application, the approval process, issue tracking, knowledge base, it all happens within VBS itself. And those extensions, as you make them, um, they get overlaid on top of the Fusion applications. And then of course, that's what the end user sees as part of the application itself. Okay. So hopefully that was a good intro and overview of Visual Builder Studio. In the next videos, we'll go through Visual Builder IDE itself and look at how we're gonna edit a page very quickly from express mode, advanced mode, uh, and actually build our own pages and flows in upcoming videos. So hopefully that was helpful. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.